In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. 
her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. 
for all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received five talents went and traded, the, traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvested where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My sons and daughters in Christ, make no mistake about it. God has blessed each and every one of us, blessed us abundantly in ways that we perhaps do not realize. Now, perhaps it is not the way we want to be blessed. Perhaps we would rather have other skills, other abilities, have more of some things and less of others. I myself would love to be able to play a musical instrument, yet I have yet to undertake the practice that would be necessary to do so, perhaps someday. I'd also like to have lots of cash, but that hasn't happened either. Though I came close once, I was driving back from retreat in California and I stopped in Mesquite and I had to have lunch and I exercised my wrist a little bit. And I won a jackpot, about $4,000. But on one of the lines, if one symbol had been one line down, I would have won 13 million. It was not to be. But I have been blessed. Been blessed by being called to the, to the Holy Catholic Church and blessed to be able to serve as a priest of the Most High God. And that is more than enough. Oftentimes we ignore our blessings. We ignore the good things that God has given us or we put them not to good use, but to bad use. For example, think of artists who have wonderful skills and yet use them to denigrate the good and exalt the base and the ugly and the sinful. Think of those people who are very smart and yet they use their intelligence to steal and to oppress. In our gospel, we are reminded that there will be an accounting for how we use what God has given us. By the way, in the gospel, the talents that be, are being spoken of are not skills, but it's an ancient form of, of measurement of precious metal. It's a bar of gold or, or silver or copper, you know, something precious. And we are blessed in English to have that wordplay where talent for us means skills. There were those who used the blessing which their master gave them to produce more, and they were blessed because of it. And then there was that one guy who took his singular talent out to the backyard, dug a hole, and buried it. And because he had done nothing with his blessings, he was assigned a place among the unfaithful. He was thrown outside to wail and grind his teeth. One of the saddest things in my life is to meet someone in confession who has committed a sin that they, that they believe is so terrible that it cannot be forgiven. Sometimes the way they express this is by confessing the same sin, not the same type of sin, that's something different, but the same sin over and over and over again as if God does not have the power to forgive it the first time. Sometimes what they do is try to justify the sin, say it's not really a sin at all, though in their heart they know different. They think to themselves, that's it, game over, there's no way God is ever going to forgive me. It is so awful and so unforgivable. 
No sin is unforgivable. Anyone here think they're more powerful than God? Good, because you're not. And because you are not more powerful than God, you cannot commit a sin that God is powerless to forgive. If you repent, if you repent and turn from the sin, everything can be forgiven. If you commit such a horrible sin, it is past time to seek healing and forgiveness. There are many who labor with such sins on their conscience. Some of the most horrible that I encounter in confession are those people who have either had an abortion or helped another person have one. It weighs upon their conscience year after year after year. They think that they cannot be forgiven, but they can. Because the message of the church is not that that is an unforgivable sin so terrible that you might as well just go out and live under a rock. But the message of the church is one of healing and forgiveness. Seek healing, whether it be for this sin or any other sin. We are blessed in this diocese now to have Project Rachel. It is an organization which seeks to provide healing and forgiveness for those who have procured an abortion. If you want to know more about it, ask me or go on to the diocesan website. But regardless, seek forgiveness, seek healing for this and for other sins. It occurred to me that the ability to seek forgiveness and to accept it is also a blessing and a talent. Do not put that blessing in a hole. Do not go out to your backyard and dig a hole and place that blessing within it. But rather use it. Let it be fruitful so that you can walk in the pathway of the Most High God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who hath spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in prayer for the needs of the church and the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Oscar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, those who care for the sick, and all those affected by the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders will govern in accord with the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fallen away and apostate Catholics will return to Christ's church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to the religious life, diaconate, and priesthood. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and the safety of our military forces and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those most in need of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who make and enforce the laws that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit to protect the right to life of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions that we add in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, look with kindness upon these prayers which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Peter Milton. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, he, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, while we're unable to approach our Lord's altar in our church, in faith, we make a spiritual act of communion as we pray, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Master. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen. Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor vanished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most 